What should we expect from a Jero Averill's Carolina Panthers defense in 2023? I'll tell you right now on Locked On Panthers. You are Locked On Panthers, your daily Carolina Panthers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, as always, Julian Council. Talking Carolina Panthers with you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Your team every day. That's our motto here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter, at Julian Council, where on Fridays, like tomorrow, I answer your weekly Friday mailbag questions, either at me or DM me if you'd like to participate in this week's edition of the Weekly Friday Mailbag right here on Locked on Panthers. And we are still in the midst of OTA's Phase 3, Week 1 of that as the Panthers still have two more weeks before they head into mandatory minicamp. And then about a six, seven-week hiatus leading up to training camp in the 2023 season. And it cannot come soon enough as we are really deep into the offseason and just looking for anything to discuss and look forward to yesterday talked about some of the guys who I think are candidates to be breakout uh, players for the Panthers in 2023 today we'll talk about the expectations for Gerald Vero's Panthers defense now we're not going to talk like statistical expectations and whether it be a top 10 defense really I'm going to go off of what we heard from Todd Wash Panthers defensive line coach Pete Hansen the or Peter he can go by either. This is not really care. Peter, Peter Hansen, um, what he has to say about the inside linebackers and how that's coming along. And then Tim Lukaboo, Luk- Lukaboo, Luku- yeah, Lukaboo, Tim Lukaboo, the outside linebackers coach. So heard from all three of those guys. Panthers did a really good job this week and they have done it the last you know two seasons, um, allowing the media FaceTime with people that aren't just the head coach, Frank Reich and the quarterback and, you know, the coordinators, but also be able to talk to some of these position coaches. And it it's important, especially right now, as we're sitting here during OTAs and they're still going through installs and a lot of y'all are wondering what's it going to look like who's going to be in certain positions how are guys going to be utilized we'll be learning a lot about that on Wednesday afternoon we're going to talk about that on today's show now we'll start off with Todd Wash and the Panthers defensive line if you look at it I don't think any group was more impacted by the change from a 4-3 to a 3-4 base scheme than the Panthers' defensive line. You also look at the fact that they brought in Shai Tuttle, Deshaun Williams. There's still holdovers, of course, like Derek Brown of the Panthers exercise fifth-year option on him for the 24 season, and also having guys like Marquand McCall back, Bravion Roy. This is a position group that I think we want to see more out of, more so in terms of like not stopping the run because I think they've done – an okay job at that. And Derek Brown especially is a solid run stopper, but we would like to see them be better at getting after the passer. Now the three, four defense, more of that is going to be asked upon the outside linebackers, the Brian Burns and some of the other guys out there who were still wondering who's going to step up as that other outside linebacker presence and other pass rusher. And is that player even on the roster, but defensive line wise, you're going from, you know, four man front to three man front. So how does that going to look? Well, according to Todd Wash, Panthers defensive line coach, Derek Brown, he's going to line up all over the place. He's going to line up in some of the exact same spots he did before in the 4-3 scheme that they had here in his first three years as a Carolina Panther. And he'll also line up over the guard and over the center, which is he's what he's typically done. But the new wrinkle for him will be lining up a little bit on the outside over a tackle at times. The, the biggest change for Derek Brown really is the technique and also the new language that they're having to learn in this 3-4 scheme that he thinks that, they can get more two-gap play out of Brown this year, that he has the ability to be even more versatile than he's been before. It's not like he was asked to do as much as he's going to be asked to do now with the change in the scheme where you have one less down lineman in this scheme. And again, as Jero Rivera, the new D.C. and Carolina, said, there's going to be times where they're going to be 3-4. There's going to be times where they're 4-3. Like The base is a 3-4 defense. And depending on, obviously, who's on the roster and the opponent, they're going to change the looks. But primarily, what we're looking at now is that odd man front and Derek Brown in the middle of it, and even sometimes lining up at a defensive end position in this new scheme. Now, one of the things that Todd Wash really wants to work with Derek Brown on heading into the season, it's not being able to stop the run. We know Derek Brown can do that, but it's rushing the passer so far. 
through three seasons, Derek Brown has six career sacks. And if you go back to his career at Auburn, it wasn't like he was one of those interior edge uh, interior rushers that really was wreaking havoc on quarterbacks in the SEC. He was great at wreaking havoc on centers and guards and being able to stop the run and being a menace that way of tackles for loss. But it wasn't coming by the way of a sack back in college and certainly has not been the case so far in, in the NFL in Carolina. I think it took until that that Saturday night game, yeah, his rookie season against Green Bay for him to get his first career sack. I know there's a lot of people who are Panthers fans that are frustrated by that because we watched Kawan Short be one of those players who could really rush the passer from the interior. That's not really been Derrick Brown's game. But maybe it's going to change with Todd Wash here in Carolina working with him and in this new 3-4 scheme where Derrick Brown's going to be asked to be more of a pass rusher. Well, yes, the brunt of that's going to lay upon the feet of, De- of uh, Brian Burns and some of the other outside linebackers, maybe even Frankie Louvu on this roster. But maybe Derek Brown can add half of that total, maybe four sacks this year, which would, of course, be an improvement. If he get to six, of course, that is doubling what he's done so far. So, yeah, they're going to ask Derek Brown to get after the passer more in this new scheme. And it's not just Derek Brown who's going to be able to line up in multiple spots, but Shai Tuttle who's coming over from New Orleans, a division rival. He's from uh, North Carolina, having gone to North Davidson High School, played college football back in Tennessee. He's someone who started the last two seasons with the Saints, so has plenty of experience and has played in a similar scheme in New Orleans. And like Derek Brown, Todd Wash believes that he can play that nose tackle position. He can also play at that defensive end spot in this 3-4 scheme. Henry Anderson, who was brought on as more of that edge rush stopper not like not an edge rusher but someone who can stop the who can set the edge on the defensive line and stop the run that's what they brought him in to do late or late in the preseason right before the season started Henry Anderson is also someone who they think they can move inside and outside in this new scheme so Shai Tuttle's here because he's flexible can play the inside and the outside and has experience playing in a similar scheme in New Orleans over the last couple of seasons and it's not just those guys you got Mark McCall here Bravion Roy John Penasini all three of them are seen as more true nose guards nose tackles in this scheme we saw McCall last year was able to really flash in the preseason and even got an opportunity at points in times last season to get out there and Bravion Roy He's now heading into what I believe what is his fourth year in Carolina. So a money year for him to show that he's someone who can go out there and can be a really good uh, role guy and someone who can uh, rotate in in this scheme for the Carolina Panthers. So excited to see what they can do. And Todd Wash is someone who actually, along with him, is kind of still learning on the job. He has more of a 4-3 background, but he wanted to go to Detroit to work under Dan Campbell so he could learn the 3-4 scheme so that he could have other opportunities like the opportunity he has right now in Carolina. So I'm excited to see what those guys can do, but the plans for Derrick Brown certainly have me excited, and I imagine they have the coaching staff excited knowing that they have a player who really emerged last year who could add to his arsenal and really take another step heading into this 2023 season where – Who knows how good Derrick Brown really could be and what he could show. And maybe he's one of those people who emerges and announces himself to the NFL as a breakout candidate here in 2023. The Panthers also have some questions about what's going to happen at inside linebacker as far as, well, what are they going to look like? And where are they going to line up? Well, we know Shaq Thompson's back. We know that Frankie Lou was there. What about Bumper Pool? What could he add? Jeremy Chin, is he going to line up at inside linebacker this season? We'll talk about Pete Hansen and the Panthers' defensive plans at inside linebacker here in 2023 in just a moment here on Locked on Panthers. And, wow, congratulations to the Boston Celtics for uh, staving off elimination on Tuesday and not having a massive break in between the end of the conference finals and the beginning of the NBA finals. Congrats to the league, but uh, make a fast break over the FanDuel during the NBA playoffs because right now new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. There's no better place to bet on all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. I think if you look at the Panthers depth chart, I don't know if there's a bigger drop off from starters to backups than there is at inside linebacker. Cornerback might be the other position that you would look at, maybe even outside linebacker. But when you really look at who's behind Frankie Lou and Shaq Thompson, 
I don't know if you can be all that confident in someone to step up at corner. We know Henderson has plenty of experience and snaps, so he's someone who can go out there and he can make plays. He had two interceptions last year. He was also the GOAT in a bad way in a lot of the games the Panthers played. Uh, Keith Taylor's had experience. Eric Rose now is a veteran, which I think was an important signing for that cornerback room, especially knowing that uh, Dante Jackson and J.C. Horn have struggled with injuries the last couple of seasons here in Carolina. So the corner, we'll see. I'm... I'm optimistic that Jonathan Cooley, the new cornerback coach, and then the assistant cornerback coach, D'Angelo Hall, can get the most out of those guys that are the backups this upcoming season. And then just really, I'm hoping that J.C. Horn stays healthy for a full 17-game season, at least give us like 16 or 15 games this year. And then same thing with Dante Jackson, just stay healthy. And don't both be out at the same time, as we saw. That did not work out well at all. Week 17 on the road against Tampa when the season was on the line and then at edge rusher at outside linebacker, I guess, you know, you, you have Marquise Haynes who situationally has been good. It took him a while last season before he really stepped up and started to make some plays and you have Luva who can move out there. So you, you can find some players in the drop off some sacks in 21 when the Panthers had Burns and Hassan Reddick was not that steep from when 2022 when it was Brian Burns and just, you know, a collection of other guys that you hoped would be able to add something as far as the pass rush went, where they went from 39 sacks to 35. But at inside linebacker, if something happens to Shaq or to Frankie, I don't know what the Carolina Panthers are going to do this upcoming season. So it is paramount that those guys stay healthy. It's also just important that, you know, they continue to play at a high level like they have over the last couple of seasons, especially Frankie Luva, who I am still saying is a breakout candidate because I don't know how many t- people in the league are paying that close attention to what he did last year and what he's capable of doing this upcoming season in the middle of this defense and even maybe moving outside at linebacker as a pass rusher at points and times in this new scheme here in 2023. But we were talking about heading into the show, you know, what are the expectations for the Carolina Panthers and for this defense in under a Jero Rivero in this new 3-4 scheme. Well, Pete Hansen was asked that, the inside linebackers coach here in Carolina who worked last season in Denver under a Jero Rivero in his first year as a DC. And he said the main thing to expect is effort. Effort from all the players on this defensive unit. And a lot of times, you know, you look at offense, you can scheme guys open. Look at what Kyle Shanahan has done in well, in Atlanta when he was there, but really in San Francisco as a head coach, he schemes guys open all the time. It's why he's able to win games with guys like Brock Purdy, with Jimmy Garoppolo, and some of the lesser talented quarterbacks in the league. It's why he can have success with a Nick Mullins for a period of time. So he can scheme guys open. You, and you've seen Sean McVay do the same thing as well. Offensively, the scheme is really important. Of course, the talent, the quarterback, but the players, skill positions, that matters. You look at the college game, being able to have the scheme, Seems pretty important. Defensively, yeah, you got to have the dudes. And the Panthers have the dudes. But I always remember when I played at the youth level, the defense always worked harder than the offense. And the effort level always had to be higher than the offense because they're trying to figure out what the offense is doing. And the defense, you see in the drills and practice, they're always playing at a disadvantage. And not knowing exactly what the offense is going to do, having an idea, they're playing at a disadvantage. So the effort always has to be at a certain level. And last year in Denver, Pete Hansen said the exp- the emphasis for them was effort. And early on here in Carolina, as they're going through um, installing the defense, the emphasis still is effort. Well, boy, you got a good group of guys at inside linebacker when we're talking about effort. Shaq Thompson and Frankie Luvu, they're going to give it to you every single day. Monday through Friday and Saturday and even on Sunday and mainly on Sundays, they're going to give you that effort that you want to see. And Shaq Thompson, Pete Hansen said he's smart, wily veteran. His leadership has stood out to him so far, how he's so loud and commands uh, that presence in the locker room. And he's able to be someone who the Panthers players already respect. They've voted him as a captain the last couple of seasons and the way he's played, he's earned that respect as well. And he's someone that, we waited a while for Shaq to really get an opportunity at linebacker when it was Luke Keekley and Thomas Davis there in the middle of the Panthers defense. Once Shaq took over, yeah, there was maybe a, one or two growing pains, but he's turned into a damn good player. And we look at the signings that have been made and the moves and transactions this offseason. I don't know how many more are more important, if at all, than Shaq Thompson in the middle of that defense to be able to find a way to keep him here, especially when you consider 
the lack of depth that's there at inside linebacker. Now, unfortunately, I don't think anyone asked him, uh, Pete Hansen, about the depth there and what some guys do. They, someone did ask about Bumper Pool, an undrafted free agent who was one of the Panthers' top 30 visits, player out of Arkansas, who had a season ending injury last year when he was playing there in his final year with the Razorbacks. And he was someone who Pete Hansen said he had a ton of production back in college and he's already showing his football aptitude and he's looking forward to see what he can do in pads. Because right now, it's not pads, it's not really anything crazy that's going on. He was trying to learn a defense, going through meetings, and rookies have more meetings than the veterans. So, hey, go out there, you need to pass the test, at least on paper. But when the field test actually happens, we'll find out how much, if at all, Frank Bumperpool can contribute for the Carolina Panthers. But Shaq Thompson having him back, excited about that. Frankie Lubu. And Hanson was asked about, is there anyone that you've worked with before that you can compare him to? And he just said he's unique. Um, and his ability to be a pass rusher, having seven sacks last year. And and it's possible, and, I, I'm, and maybe it's true, that I've, I've undervalued uh, Frankie Louvu as an edge rusher uh, from what we saw last year with his seven sacks, where, you know, it's his first year as a full-time starter. I don't – is that what we should expect every year? I, I have no idea. He's shown the ability even the year prior in 21, but it wasn't like he got that many opportunities to do that. We know he can get to the backfield. We had, what, 19 tackles for loss uh, last season to go along with those seven sacks. So – He's he's a problem, man, for a lot of these defenses and that effort and just his intelligence in the playing the game, being able to identify what's happening. He's he's a great player, and I'm excited to see what he can do this year and his ability to play as a pass rusher and then play off the ball as well. That's what Pete Hansen said really makes him pretty unique in the NFL. Uh, and Jeremy Chin, how is he going to fit into this? Now, Hansen said that it's pretty, you know, obvious right now and everyone knows it's public knowledge that Jeremy Chin has been playing a lot of nickel back for the Panthers playing some big nickel which he did play when he played a little bit of linebacker well not a little all, all a lot of linebacker his rookie year he's been playing that big nickel and in that playmaking role he could still play safety he's gonna just be all over the defense here they want him close to the line of scrimmage and that's one of the storylines that I think a lot of us are really looking forward to heading into this 2023 season where I think Jeremy Chin could really just burst onto the scene more than he already has. And that's one of the things like the Panthers, when I say that the Panthers have just not been a nationally relevant team throughout a lot of these guys career. Like people know who Brian Burns is been a pro bowler two straight years, but does the NFL know about Frankie Louvu yet? Do they know about how good of a player Shaq Thompson has been? Do they know about Derek Brown and JC Horn? I think this is the year where the NFL world is going to really be introduced by these to these guys because the Carolina Panthers are going to be a team that, is going to be competitive because the last couple of seasons, the talk was okay. That yeah, Brian Burns, really good player. Uh, what is Matt Rule doing? Christian McCaffrey, always injured, but when he's out there healthy, he's outstanding. And then the quarterback play is just atrocious. Like that's been the storylines. But now I think we can start talking about hopefully, not I mean, we already do it, but I hope like as a national NFL media that they can start talking about all the good things and the potential that the Carolina Panthers defensive players have and what they may be able to show this upcoming season. So Chen going to play a lot of nickelback uh, TBD on how much linebacker he'll play. If at all, when you have Shaq and when you have Frankie Louvu, you maybe don't need him to be in a linebacker position. It's possible that maybe on third downs, he plays linebacker and you might have Jimmy Robinson there at nickel or you add in another corner. I, I don't really know what they want to do there. Um, so there's, they have options and that's the important thing about having options and that they see Jeremy Chen as a superhero, but, but they don't know what Cape he's going to wear from day to day. Like he could play safety. He could play nickel. He could play linebacker. I don't, I don't know if he's an edge rusher just yet, uh, but he has been asked to blitz back in the past when Phil Snow was a DC here in Carolina. All we know is that he's a fantastic player and that it's going to be fun to see how he's deployed this year in this new three, four scheme under a Jero Averro in Carolina. So that's a look at the inside linebackers. We've also looked at the defensive line. Uh, how do the outside linebackers look? Brian Burns not out there right now. Recovering from ankle surgery. What about a, uh, Tim Lukubu's or Lukubu's squad. What are those guys doing out outside linebackers? Anyone emerge? We'll talk about that here in just a moment on Locked On Panthers. If there is a roster hole right now for the Carolina Panthers, it is at outside linebacker opposite of Brian Burns. Right now, Brian Burns recovering from an ankle injury. Hopefully, he'll be back and ready to go by training camp, and I would expect that to be the case. I did say on the show earlier this week that I wouldn't necessarily be all that surprised uh, just because it is an offseason injury 
if Brian Burns just shows up on the pup list. We, we saw J.C. Horn last year coming off of that foot injury that was suffered in week three of his rookie season in 2021 where he came up. He had to start off on the pup list. Not anything to really get all that concerned about. Come the season, J.C. Horn is ready to go. And I expect Brian Burns to be ready to go as well. It's just possible that the Carolina Panthers might want to give him a little bit more time instead of throw him out there. But we'll see. That's just one of the things where I say I am i don't have really any, any insider information. I'm just saying that it's a possibility, and it wouldn't be really something that I would be all that concerned about or surprised if that does happen. But the hope is that he'll be ready to go, and we won't have to be concerned about that at all, even though I don't think it's that big of a concern as is. But a big concern, though, is um, who is going to be the starting outside linebacker opposite of him? Because Hassan Reddick was really good, and he was even better last year. He's now had three straight years of double-digit sacks in the NFL, and he got paid by Philly, his hometown team, went to the Super Bowl. And during Super Bowl week, he talked about how the Carolina Panthers had other plans. Those other plans were uh, not to resign him, to go after Deshaun Watson. And, well, that ended in embarrassment and Deshaun Watson going to Cleveland and not here in Carolina. And the Panthers, you know, kind of not getting that whole quarterback situation figured out a year ago. But we've moved on to Bryce Young and to our hopes and dreams being in the hands of the Alabama quarterback who David Tepper believes can win multiple Super Bowls here in Carolina. But really the focus of this conversation right now is on outside linebacker and who can step up. Frank Reich has said that there is a starter there at outside linebacker. I'm skeptical of it. I've actually heard who you talked to on Monday is. I think a lot of people who follow the team, uh, whether they're a fan, a podcast host, or a reporter, are all looking at the Panthers a little bit sideways being like, okay, so are y'all really – not going to do anything about this. And it's not like there's a competition right now. They're all trying to learn. And, and Tim Lukabu, who's the outside linebacker coach here in Carolina, he, he also is kind of learning in a way like Todd Wash, you have more about this 3-4 scheme and trying to get these guys on the right page. But there's an opportunity while Burns is out over the next couple of weeks for someone to reveal themselves as, an option that the Panthers could feel good about without needing to go out there and get a veteran. Now, I still think they need to get a veteran, even if someone shows up. Like I, I just think it's a, it's the smart thing to do. They have the cash space to do it. Why not bring in a veteran? But right now, we're kind of focused on the transition of some guys, like Itor Grossmatos, who naturally, and this has been stated by the coaching staff, is more of a 4-3 defensive end. But now he's having to stand up and be an outside linebacker. And when he played as a 4-3 defensive end the last couple of seasons, it's not like he really produced. So now to play out of position, so to say, naturally, that's a pretty big learning curve. And so far, Tim Lukabu has said that he, he's called him a grinder and he's a worker, and that's not anything that you would not expect to hear about Etor Grossmanos that's been said about him since he came to Carolina. Uh, out of Penn State, by the way, the second round. Um, but he's happy where he's at right now in his development. Marquise Haynes is also someone who I look at at, at Ole Miss. I think he played in more of a 3-4 scheme. And he is more of a, a guy who's a lot, who's who is undersized as far as just his weight. And he still kind of is in the NFL. He's put on more pounds. And I think the 3-4 scheme could potentially you know fit him pretty well. Um, he comes in it with – um those innate tools and instincts that fit the scheme well. And that kind of tracks with how I felt about Haynes transitioning now into this three, four uh, defense, especially with Tim Lukabu as his position coach. So Marquise Haynes, we've seen what he can do. Can he build upon that? I don't know. It feels like he kind of is who he is and possibly he's one of those uh, breakout candidates as well. I should have talked about yesterday as a, a veteran who has gone and has like what four or five, six sacks the last couple of seasons. Is it possible um, that now, he can really step up in this new role. We'll see. Uh, as far as like a, as a coverage aspects, you know, will these guys be out in coverage a lot? Yeah, we've seen in the past, you know, guys like Brian Burns have been dropped in coverage before. Will they be doing a lot of that? Uh, it's not really set, of course, as they're still trying to uh, implement what they want to do uh, with this defense. But it is something that uh, we should expect to see at some point in time for these outside linebackers and. You think, too, about a guy like Frankie Louvre. You put him back there at outside linebacker. You drop him. You feel good about that. Maybe if you put Jimmy Chin at outside linebacker and drop him. like There's some chess pieces here on the Panthers board that they can really use this upcoming season that really makes this defense interesting. So the main thing to expect is effort. And when you got effort and you got talent and you got a tremendous scheme, I think you uh, got the recipe for one of the best defenses in the NFL here 
in 2023. That's going to wrap up this edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, hosted by yours truly, Julian Council. Again, y'all subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter, at Julian Council, where tomorrow I'll be back to answer your weekly Friday mailbag questions, either at me or DM me to get those questions into me now. In the meantime, be safe, be happy, be whole. As always, keep pounding, and I'll talk to y'all on Friday.